you have to try this productive springtime trout streamer. To start, we'll grab some black thread, here I'm using 6 aught, cure it to our hook shank, and lay down a thread base for our next steps. We'll then grab some wire and a stinger hook. Here I'm using a size 8, which I find perfect for most trout. Measure it to length, keeping it about the size of our hook shank, and using our thread to secure it tightly. Wrap up towards the hook eye, folding your wire over and securing it back towards the hook. This will help ensure that it stays in place. Snip your wire free using the back end of your scissors and carefully secure the tag ends to the hook shank. Once complete, we'll whip finish and snip our thread free, swapping it out for a smaller yet durable 70 denier UTC. Secure it to your hook shank, snip the excess free, and continue wrapping down the hook shank a bit further than we left off. Once complete, bring your thread forward and create a dubbing loop. Next, we'll grab some fluorescent pink ice dubbing, straightening out the fibers by using your fingers to separate them, pinch them back together, and continuing this process until they lay flat at which point we'll insert them into our dubbing loop, space it out with your fingers, and use your fingers or a weighted tool to help spin it up. And brush it out to give it a nice, bucky look. With this complete, we'll begin wrapping it around our hook shank, brushing back any fibers to ensure that we don't trap it underneath. Continue this process about halfway up the hook shank. Once complete, use your thread to secure the dubbing loop in place, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind, and snipping the excess free. Grab your dubbing brush, brush out any trapped fibers, and of course, give it a nice, bucky look. With this complete, wrap back on your dubbing slightly to help brush it back. Also, one simple trick with these intruders is to take a piece of foam and stick it over the hook eye so your materials or fingers don't get stuck in it. We'll then create another dubbing loop just in front of our pink dubbing ball, grabbing some white ice dubbing, UV white larval lace, and a little more pink ice dubbing. Create another dubbing blend and slide this up our dubbing loop, spinning it up and brushing it free just as we did before. With this complete, we'll carefully begin to wrap it forward in close touching spirals, brushing back any fibers to ensure we don't trap them. We'll continue about three thirds of the way up the hook. And if you have a little too much dubbing, you can secure it early and snip the excess free. Brushing everything back and taking a few thread wraps on top of it to give it a nice brush bath look. Brush any trapped fibers free Next, we'll grab some lateral scales. Here I'm using a pearl. Secure it to one side. Folding the excess over and securing it to the opposite. We'll trim these to length to reach a little bit past our hook. Next, we'll grab some white marabou, brush the fibers backwards and snip the tip free, leaving us with a small tie-in point. Secure to your hook shank and begin to palmer it up the body. Once again, being sure to brush all the fibers backwards to give it a better look. Typically, I like to do about two to three turns, depending on the look you're going for. Once happy, use your thread to secure the marabou in place and snip the excess free. Brushing all your fibers backwards and wrapping on top of it to help give it that brush back look. We'll then grab a grizzly saddle hackle Grab two fibers and secure them to the upper portion of our fly. I find it's usually easiest to start with one and then tie in the second. Secure them tightly and snip the excess free. We'll then grab a mallard flank. For this pattern, I prefer to use the slightly darker ones that have a little bit of brown in them. However, it's hard to find them sold like this, so either go into a fly shop and find what you're looking for, but if not, you can always swipe it out for a white alternative. Secure it to the head of the fly, and begin to wrap this forward, once again, about two to three turns. Brushing the fibers back as you go, and laying the stem just in front of the previous wrap. Once happy, use your thread to secure, and snip 
the excess free. Carefully cover up your tag end and build up a small head section, wrapping back on the mallard flank slightly. Whip finish to hold everything in place. Seat your knot and snip your thread free and brush it out to help separate your mallard flank and give it that nice buggy look. Clean up the head and add durability by panning it over with some UV resin. Fix in place with a UV light and this is a micro intruder pattern that I created to imitate our local springtime smelt. It's a great pattern that I had a lot of success on last year. I'd give this one away, but I'm trying to fill up my fly box before the season starts. Now remember, if you'd like to help support the channel, you can pick up some flies on my website or submit a custom order form. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.